Hi, hello, this is Miss Fatima. This is a recorded session for year three. Okay, have a, have a great session. So for the main part of our lesson today, we'll be looking at pronunciation. And in particular, we'll be looking at the pronunciation of this sound, th. Um, it's actually got two, the TH makes two sounds and I'll be going through this in more detail in today's lesson um, and I just wanted to say that uh, as part of our phonics and reading um, sessions sometimes I'll be um, incorporating um, pronunciation um, as a regular feature actually so uh, today is like the proper sort of pronunciation session that will be we will be having on the sound um, on the letters th which makes either th or the and this is I'm going to go through it in more detail so now the pronunciation um, as I said of a th is actually um, th makes two different pronunciations and um, and I'll be giving you some guidelines to help you decide when to pronounce this or that when you're talking and when you're reading um and and remember at the end of the day the more practice you do the better you get at it now the sound th um is actually a very common sound in the english language um but it's not very common in many other languages um now the sound th um um, as I said, it's it, it's really common in, in in the English language, and and if you're having trouble pronouncing the correct th sound, um, don't don't worry, you know, don't don't feel embarrassed at all because you're you're not you're not alone. Uh, many people struggle with this sound, but the good news is, with practice, you can get really good at uh, pronouncing making the correct th pronunciation um it's a bit like when you go to the gym for the first time um you you practice your muscles and at the end of day one you go home and you you're feeling really stiff and your muscles are all are aching all over um and you you can actually think of the pronunciation of the same way because pronunciation comes from our tongue and mouth and tongue our tongue is actually a muscle um, and the more we practice it the better we get at pronunciation so much like going to the gym um, where you're you the more you practice the stronger you get and the less ache you feel it's the same with your tongue with practice you know practice makes perfect as they say so um, now let's let's look at um let's look at the position of the mouth i'm just going to get a little bit closer to the camera now to just show you what i mean by the position of the sound now when you're pronouncing the sound th your tongue needs to stick out a little bit i'm just going to show you here so the can you see my tongue i've noticed um a lot of children, when they're pronouncing the sound th, they don't stick out their tongue, so they end up saying z, z. Because when your tongue is inside, you either make the sound s, s, or the sound z, z. But the correct way to pronounce the sound th is to stick your tongue a little bit. Yeah, so just like th, th. And notice. It is not free flowing. It's, there's a little bit of tension between my upper teeth and the tongue. So, v, v, yeah. So, v. remember your tongue needs to stick out a little bit. Yeah? V, v, v. And you can use your finger there as a guide. Not too much, like v, v, that's wrong, yeah. And not too much inside. That's that's incorrect. So just the right position, just t stick it out a little bit. Okay, so that's the position of your mouth. Now let's look at the two different sounds that TH makes. 
Um, the first one is what, what we call the voiced uh, TH sound. And this is voiced because you need to use your throat. You need to use your vocal co cords. Your vocal cords are in your throat. Yeah. So the first sound is V. V, v. and when you if you put your hand on your throat you can almost feel the vibrations v, v. yeah so that's the voiced th v, v. yeah now the second one is the unvoiced yeah the, the p position of the mouth the tongue is still the same but it's unvoiced because i'm not going to use my throat i'm now going to use my tongues i'm going to fill my my sorry my lungs i'm going to fill them with air and i need to push out the air that's the second sound yeah so that's unvoiced and this is the voiced th v, 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 voiced and unvoiced okay now um and 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 when when do we use voiced th and when do we use an unvoiced th that's a great question unfortunately there is no straight answer to this and i know that you just you love it when you ask a question and i give you the answer to it it's just one plus one equals two you there's no other way around it um but you know with the with this with the th sound there are a lot of exceptions and unfortunately it's not possible for me to give you a straight answer like this is when you use the voiced and that's when you use the unvoiced so yeah that that's unfortunately the case however there are some guidelines that i can give you to help you remember in general yeah, when to use the voiced th and when to use the unvoiced th now remember i said guidelines so these are not rules so for that there will be lots and lots of exceptions okay so now let's look at the um let's look at the unvoiced sound first of all uh which is the the unvoiced th so now when the unvoiced usually um we use the unvoiced th when we are using content words words that give meaning uh, to a sentence um, words such as nouns um, so an example would be a, a thorn or a, a thorn is usually what it's you know a thorn is a prickly thing that you find in roses and some plants that's a thorn yeah or a thumb yeah, thorn, a thumb, or you can, uh, for example, or, or even verbs like think, thought, um, or you can even um, in adjectives such as thin, thick. These are all, um, these are all unvoiced. Yeah. So the gen generally, when the th, um, the th is unvoiced in content content words words that give meanings uh, meaning to a sentence uh like, like i said like i've just given you examples of verbs and nouns and adjectives uh and secondly if the th is between two consonants um is usually unvoiced uh if the th is in the middle of two consonants is unvoiced uh, for example, uh, bathtub, bathtub, or faithful, or um, worthless. Yeah, bathtub is the bath that is in the toilet when you're having a bath. It's the bathtub. You go in the bathtub when you're having a relaxed bath. Uh, faithful, someone who is tr trustworthy or unworthy, all of these. So the... The TH, as you might have noticed, is unvoiced, yeah? 
and uh, and if the th comes at the end of a word the th at the end of words is usually unvoiced and remember this is a general rule there are exceptions so an example would be mouth so that's unvoiced mouth yeah uh you can have strength you have strength you get strength from your muscles um you can have a teeth these are your teeth okay teeth and what else warmth when you're giving warm wearing a jacket it gives you warmth yeah so notice these are all unvoiced however there are exceptions and we will discuss these exceptions in just a minute i'm just going to go over the the voiced th now now usually we used voice th in um structure words or or, or function words now um, a structure word is a word that you need to use in a sentence but on its own it doesn't really have much meaning um, unlike the content words which have a lot of meaning um, so a structure word or a function word a, an example of that would be things like um, I've written some down here um, you've got this uh this uh, this pen the the flower there uh, there over there uh though is like although um and then um and there's also them there um and you can have yeah uh, i think i've gone through most of them um and uh, yeah these are structure word or function word they give they give meaning to a uh, they they are important for the structure of of a sentence yeah but on their own they don't have much meaning so when you use th in these kind of structure word they are the th is voiced yeah like we've just been through it the this that and remember the position of the tongue the yeah you, t you stick it out a little bit yeah and um the th between two vowels is usually voiced th between two vowels is usually voiced i've got some examples here so bother yeah when you bother someone is you're troubling them um or you've got worthy yeah worthy or you've got mother mother these are notice the th is between two vowels the th is between two vowels yeah so the th is voiced yeah what when it's between two vowels now now the th at the end of uh, uh remember earlier i said the th at the end of words is usually unvoiced remember when i said mouth teeth um what else did i say fifth um and strength i said all of those usually the th is unvoiced at the end of the words with the exception if the th ends with a an e yeah and then it beca becomes voiced so an example is bathe or breathe um you've also got yeah loathe loathe in, is when you hate something or when you hate someone so much you loathe that thing um for example i i loathe tea with sugar that means i don't like to add sugar in my tea <laughs> yeah i like my tea without sugar so yeah that that's a little general rule um, now remember uh, the, so these are uh, pretty much the guidelines that I talked to you about but there are exceptions I know that's the English language there there's always lots and lots of exceptions um, now an example of an exception is smooth clothes 
frothy. Oh. Now, I'm looking at this and I'm and I know some of you are saying, "But Miss Fatima, you said that smooth is unvoiced at the end, but that's smooth I'm voicing that." And that's because there are lots and lots of exceptions. The guidelines we are we've just been through are merely guidelines. Um but uh at the end of the day, the more you read and the more you speak, the more you will understand the differences and the exceptions, yeah? So please go through, th through this video again and um, watch it again. And, and if you can find, in fact, if you can find some other exceptions, please put them, uh, send them to me and we can discuss, we can chat about them, we can share them amongst all our friends and yeah we can continue the learning that way um and if you have any questions if any part of this video was not clear uh please also write to me and yeah i'll be more than happy to uh to respond and we can have a discussion about it uh right i i have written down some sentences uh, for us to have a bit of a practice, just a little bit of a practice to look at the, um, the yeah, some of the guidelines that we talked about. So I've got some examples here, some sentences, yeah? So the first example I've got here is there, there are, there are three of them over there. There are three of them over there. There are three of them over there. I've got another, another example here. At 3.30 on Thursday, at 3.30 on Thursday, a thousand of those thrilling thinkers will gather. Yeah? Please read with Miss Fatima. At 3.30 on Thursday, and notice that I took a bit of a pause because there was a comma there. Yeah? A thousand of those Thinkers will gather, yeah? And I've just got one last sentence for us to practice. <clears throat> Throw those things to Theo. Throw those things to Theo. Throw those things. To Theo. Now Theo is a name of a boy, okay? So that's the end of our TH sound practice today. Um, our next session will probably be a normal um, phonics session, but I'd like to incorporate more of these pronunciation sessions. Now, if you like today's session, please let me know. Write to me or uh, through school everywhere. I'd love to hear from you. Um, and if you want us to, to do it differently or if there's other sounds that you're struggling to pronounce, please write them to Miss Fatima. I'd like, I'd like to know which sounds you're struggling with and we'll practice them together, yeah? And uh, yeah, thank you very much for, for watching. And now we're going to go to our story part of the session, yeah? Okay, see you, see you soon. So for our story part for today, I've got a nice little story for you that you're all going to enjoy. Um, and it's called, How the Elephant Got Its Drunk. How the Elephant Got Its Drunk. How the elephant got its trunk. When elephants didn't have trunks, long ago, Eddie the elephant wanted to know. So, a long, long time ago, a 
apparently elephants didn't have trunks. Now, little Eddie, he's an elephant, he wanted to know. Why can't I reach that fruit in the tree? He was asking. Why does an ostrich look like me? He saw an ostrich. That bird is an ostrich, yeah? And so Eddie the elephant, he was asking all these questions. Why is giraffe... So tall and spotty, Eddie the elephant is asking all these questions. Eddie questions drove everyone potty. Eddie's questions draw everyone potty, it means draw everyone crazy. Yeah, so he just kept asking and asking. Eddie always asked things like who and what and when and where. But the animals ignored him again and again. What does a crocodile have for his tea? He was asking, what does crocodiles eat for their dinner? No one replied. So... He went off to sea. Down by the great green greasy river, he saw something slip and slide and slither. Crocodile, he went to ask the crocodile. Crocodile, what do you eat for your tea? I am not a crocodile. Don't bother me. Oh, it does look like a crocodile, but it's not actually a crocodile. So Eddie is just a little boy. He doesn't even know the difference between a snake and a crocodile. Eddie strode on down the long river bank. What is that great? Green, greasy plank. Oh, he saw something green and slimy. Ah, uh, hello. Come closer, you curious chap. <gasps> it was the crocodile. Doesn't he know that crocodiles are dangerous and snappy and that he could eat him? <gasps> oh, dear, oh, dear. It's so bad. Shall I turn the page? Oh my goodness. <gasps> Croc grabbed Eddie's nose with a mighty snap. Let go, please. Let go. You're hurting me, Eddie said. But it's elephant's nose that I like for tea. Oh dear, that's what Croc said. So Eddie, remember, asked him, what do you like for tea? And now Croc's tried to bite off his trunk. He hasn't got, he hasn't got much of, what, of a trunk and he's trying to bite it. And he's saying, it's elephant's trunk that I like for tea. <gasps> Stretching and straining, Eddie jumped ashore. Whew! But Croc held on tight with his toothy jaw. So Eddie's pulling and Croc is also pulling. They're both going, uh, uh, uh. I wonder what's going to happen next. This is turning into a sticky situation. <gasps> Snake slithered down to help Eddie out. Croc let go of the rubbery snot. Boing. Uh oh. What happened there? What happened to Eddie's nose? Did it grow longer? <gasps> it did. It did, didn't it? Wow. Eddie's new nose made him proud. 
Now I can trumpet really loud, he said. No one could ignore the elephant now. He kept trumpeting questions. Who, what, when, where, how. Everybody was listening because he had a lovely long trunk. And how did I live? Without a trunk before, he kept asking that question. How can I pick up, how, I mean, I can pick up fruit, cool down, and so much more, yes. Of course, every elephant has a trunk now, and this story told you exactly how a tr an elephant got his trunk. The end. Yeah. Now that's the story map. Remember, it started with Eddie the elephant. There he is. Doesn't have a trunk. He wanted to know where. What does a, a crocodile likes to have for his tea? He asked the snake. The snake told him, "Go away. I'm not a crocodile." And then he met a crocodile. The crocodile held on to his trunk, and they were pulling and pulling, pulling. Eventually. When the crocodile let go, Eddie's trunk grew longer. And that's how elephants got their trunk. The end. Did you like the story? I, I think I liked it too. It's a, fair, a funny little story, isn't it? Maybe, maybe you want to tell me how the giraffe got his long neck. Yeah? Maybe you can make up a story. Remember, this is fiction. It's not a real story. It's just someone just made it up. But it's very funny, isn't it? Maybe you can make up a story about how the giraffe got his neck or how the lion got its mane. The mane is the big orange hair of the lion. Yeah. Or you can choose an animal of your choice and write about it. Um, anything you want to write, I'd love to hear from you, yeah? I hope you like the story today. And uh, please uh, go through the video of the TH sound. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.